Hello and welcome to the Mantic Podcast. This is a very special edition. It's the Adepticon Megacast. I'm, I'm using the name, Rob. I might as well. Uh, of course, sadly, since we could not be at Adepticon, and usually this is the chance where you get to ask all the questions. Usually Ronnie's got a bit of beer in him, so the, the answers are a bit more loose. Um, and I'm joined by, I'm going to just rattle down the names. So we've got Rob. Hello. Uh, we've got Kyle. Hi guys. We've got Martin. Hello. We've got Matt Gilbert. Hi guys. We've got Pat. Good on, guys. And the one and only Ronnie Renton. We couldn't Sup? have a Q&A without you, Ronnie. Uh, so we asked you on Facebook for all your questions. So the plan is we're going to go through them. Uh, we're going to get all the details. Uh, someone's probably going to ask about Dead Zone Third Edition. Uh, and and we'll have a good time. Are we ready? Let's go. Okay. Yeah, yeah. we're ready. Alrighty. 100%. Uh, Roy Hood asking, with League of Infamy, uh, will we uh, we see the first Mantic halflings? Do we have a rough date when they will get their own army in Kings of War? I'm gonna send this towards you, Matt Gilbert. Uh, yeah. Well, obviously. You know, we've uh, with the the League of Infamy, it gave us a chance to uh, explore some of the concepts that we we already had, um, and to start taking the the halflings in a direction that we that we uh, wanted to go and explore. Um, we do have plans for uh, for Kings of War longer term, um, and we've got a, a timeline for the game generally and the, the the releases we want to to bring out. So so yes, it's planned. Um, the the fluff that you've probably read. Uh, in the Uncharted Empires book, uh, kind of tease them them up for for leaving the the League of Rodia, um, not 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 necessarily completely, but certainly uh, focusing back on the Shires themselves. Um, and we'll we'll look at having their own full standing army um, with a romantic spin on things. Fantastic. Um... Jesse Cornwall. Also, if I get any names completely butchered, we're just going to have to accept that because uh, it's bound to happen at some point. Uh, I'm going to fire this over to... Well, <laughs> You're Ronnie. We got that. Uh, Jesse Cornwall, um, are you ever going to make a model for the mammoth, Jeez. Mr. Martin? I'm going to send this. You can tag people in if you need to, by the way. Um... <laughs> well, looking at the size of some of the resin that's coming out of uh, Ricky's office at the moment, then you're probably going to say maybe at some point because mm. they're just getting bigger and bigger, really, aren't we? So, but I mean, I can, I can high five Matt on this one as well. See what he thinks. Uh, yeah, I mean, I don't, I don't want to just just do a uh, a mammoth again. We'd have to put some kind of mantic spin on it um, to make it make it unique and uh, mm. different, and would want to make it. Um, obviously, then available to multiple armies to make efficient use of the of the kit. Even if there were some some modelling options to to do that, but yeah, I mean, it's definitely it's it's been on the list for a long, long time. It's just one of those things of getting around to it. Why don't we just uh, do another version of the giant, mammoth giant? Yeah. Before you joined Mantic, weren't you weren't you arguing for a mammoth and an undead mammoth on almost every email, and and now you've been in charge of the studio for two years. Uh, I never wanted a mammoth. I wanted one with the fur off and just the bones. Yeah, okay, just, just, a, okay, all right. Listen, I got to step in for Jesse here. He, this guy, is, we've, we're giving him way too much. Okay, first of all, he's got his own boots. He's just getting way too much attention. We need to really, you know, the mammoth. Let's give it a pass. Yeah, <laughs> one, it's one stride too many. Yeah, <laughs> calm down, Jesse. Woo! Whoa! Pun time already after the second question. We are up and running, ladies and gentlemen. I didn't think it would take us that long. <laughs> uh, right, Rob, this one's perfect. Uh, the future of Dreadball. Dreadball Ultimate Expansion for the retail copy of second edition? So, Big obviously, question mark. The, the future of Dreadball is obviously I will continue to be the best player in the UK. Uh, <laughs> I think that's undisputed. Um, but I think we, we've got kind of lots of going on with the Dreadball RC at the minute. We're looking at doing kind of historical matches so looking at the the matches maybe like the first televised match between the Trontex and the uh, Green Moon Smackers so we're looking at kind of releasing those via a PDF uh, so there's quite a lot going on actually in, in the background for that one uh, and then Dreadball Ultimate Expansion yeah so we've got a kind of a weird situation at the minute where everyone's got the mat 
for Dreadball Ultimate, but they haven't got the cards uh, and they haven't got the tokens they need, the, the subs bench. So we're looking at kind of how we can do that uh, and try and get that into people's hands maybe this year. But uh, yeah, stay tuned for that one. So yeah, fingers crossed we'll get it sorted. Uh, Rob, are you ever going to give Rob Taylor his rematch? Because uh, I think sorry, you're scared, aren't you? Sorry, you're breaking up, mate. <laughs> This is a nice open-ended one, so it's going towards uh, uh, Ronnie. Any plans to make more races playable in Dead Zone slash Warpath? Yeah, I mean, uh, with the, I mean, we're quite excited about our whole Dead Zone world. I mean, he's doing very, very well. You know, good recruitment game and the, the 3D terrain. He's just kind of carved out a little niche all around the world. So this summer, we are... I'm going to say we've got more Thysterians and we're dipping, dipping back into there. Did we end up doing Mr. Gilbert or Mr. Mr. Martin? Did we end up in doing anything new, new? We talked about a cipher or was that something different and later? What else have we got for Dead Zone this summer? Just remind uh, me. Well, uh, by the time this goes, podcast all goes out, actually, we'll have revealed the Matsudan and the Asterian mech. So, uh, okay. yeah, people will be very excited. They'll be chomping at the so bit. So, Matsudan, okay. okay. Yeah, yeah. So they're, they're, they're separate, separate things. things. That's not a Matsudan and a Styrian mech. <laughs> the it's not some weird mashup. <laughs> the Matsudan can use it. A Styrian mech, yes. So, so there's two, two, two things coming really cool. Some more red stuff, which is excellent. Some more Asterian stuff, very pretty. Um, and I think then we were originally thinking about kind of making a slightly bigger version where you could play it, but then that's that's grown and grown into something much bigger than that. Um, so that was heading towards the end of the year. Um, but we, all I can say, I can definitely say, is we are spending a lot of time thinking and talking and being excited about our sci-fi stuff at the moment. It mm. uh, took a bit of a backseat last year with all of the Kings of War um, focus. Um, and, it, and it had a big, big update, if you remember, with the... I can never remember the word. Rob, what's the word for the book last summer? Exculpulcation. <laughs> Excelsior. Escalation. Escalation, that's it. Exculpulcation. Excommunication. Excommunication. <laughs> Excelsior. So it was one of those. Um, Escalation was the big book last summer. It's been a big update. So, yeah, it's still getting some focus. Um, as you know, we have mouth scenery fetiches, so there could be something exciting happening there. So... Dead Zone's growing, and generally our sci-fi is is getting thought about and developed, and, um, and getting some some effort and thought, longer term thought, put into it. Fantastic. The next question uh, is is going to be straight with you again, Ronnie, because it's just full of logistics. Uh, from I Felix Castro, uh, I've heard that with the recent unpleasantness, uh, rumor has it that Mantic might start moving up the release date for resin models over plastic, since manufacturing from China took a bit of a hit. Which resins have been given a hard uh, look for getting released sooner than later, if any? Okay, good question. So I'll just I'll talk you through what what the whole CV19 meant to our supply chain, as was until two weeks ago, and then what what we think is going to happen going forward, and then I will let someone far more qualified than myself talk you through the next couple of months <laughs> releases. Um, but and what that means, so. We had Terrain Crate 2 uh, halfway through being manufactured over in China. It didn't make the cutoff before Chinese New Year, and therefore it was the first project that the Chinese were going to pick up on, finish. They'd finished the tooling, but they hadn't finished the manufacture. So it's going to be a manufacturing and bagging and shipping process throughout February on a boat and over with us shortly thereafter meaning that we would have Kickstarters out probably April uh, to everybody. Um, that got pushed back because of the CV situation, CV-19 situation in China to leaving China in April. And we did originally have the first wave of those releases coming out in late April or early May going to trade accounts. So only the first wave, which I think was going to be the zombie apocalypse stuff. And that was going to tie in with our Walking Dead releases. So you could um, kind of build up your Walking Dead gaming table uh, at the same time as adding to your Walking Dead collection. So good fun and kind of joined up thinking. Obviously, the 
terrain was not going to happen. That's been pushed back to um, to being shipped out of China in April. So with us, if we're lucky, late May, early June, more realistic. That meant we had one of the releases that was supposed to come out in, in the uh, May slot, April, May slot, which now earliest is going to be June. So China is back at work. They are making that. They seem to be on schedule for that date. Um, so uh, the original move was we just got the walking dead uh, into early April. We had all of the Hellboy releases, so we put those into April. And then we looked at what we could do for May and then released the terrain crate in June. As it is, we obviously are now uh, nearly closed. We're just maintaining our online store as, as recommended by the UK government. So we're just doing that. So what we're now talking about is, is a month one release. So The Walking Dead has just come out, and although it was early April, we started shipping it to everybody to, to give them something to do during the downtime. So all The Walking Dead releases are being shipped, and if you've not got them, go grab them now. Uh, they're certainly online on uh, mantagames.com. Um, and they're going out, and they're shipping. And then we will launch when we start up again with the Hellboy expansions because we have those in the warehouse and they're made. We will also then start releasing a selection of resins that were shuffling around and we, we, we've we've obviously um, oh, oh, not not continuing to produce, but when we get back, that's what we'll put into production or some of them are ready to go. So I'll let Matt talk through what are the month one and month two resins, but I think there's, own group, there's lots of great things and we can just jump on those as soon as we're back and, and get them made and get them released. Yeah, so um, obviously, the, as, as Ronnie said, we've got those, there's the Walking Dead. Um, so, you know, that, that those, those will be going out, but obviously a lot of a lot of people won't have been able to get them or order them in time. So those will still be available almost, almost like a new release in, in month one. Uh, they will be alongside uh, the uh, Hellboy busts, um, which the guys are, you know, they're, they're all moulded. They do, they, they've made a bunch of them, but again, that's obviously slowed down and um, and will almost be like a like a fresh new release if you weren't able to pick it up before. Um, and uh, we've got uh, in things like uh, Kings of War, we've got the Soul Flares in uh, the Well of Souls. Um, we've got the Dread Fiend, which I just got some uh, pictures back from from Angel. So if I if I send those over to uh, to Rob and Matt, I'm sure they they'll put those up so people can see them. Um, and uh, and then we've people you've already seen the ogres, I guess. Um, so they'll be uh, next on the on the list as well. Um, so we've got a, a bunch of stuff coming up. Some you will have seen, some you some you won't. But um, you know we, we're. Uh, we're gearing up for for a sensible um, reintroduction to everyone back into work, um, so that we've got um, releases that don't uh, that don't demand resin resource straight away, but it gives them time to build, get going again, build back up, and then start hitting in in subsequent months. Sensible? What's that all about? Sorry, <laughs> sorry. Yeah. Uh, let's have a look at the old list. Brian Tucker, so uh, towards Kyle and Matt, between the two of you. Uh, we're expecting a Clash of Kings 2020 to balance Kings of War. Uh, also make TK playable. <laughs> Something that I think is uh, difficult right now is is normally we're relying on a lot of event results to see how the balance of the game really is shaken out. And we haven't gotten a whole lot from this year. It's it's kind of a strange time in that sense. Um, I, as far as I know, the Clash of Kings is still planned, right, Matt? I've got I've got a book called Clash of Kings 2021 in 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 the schedule. Uh, it's, um, so you know in in my in my plans it's still That's there for yes. the normal time. So Definitely. yeah. But uh, as to exactly <laughs> whether it will follow exactly the same format as previous ones, uh, I don't know. I need to have that over the next few weeks. I'll start having that discussion with the RC. See where we can take things. We'll balance what we can, um, but we might there might be some other content in there as well. Fantastic. Uh, Martin, uh, so this is Taylor Holt. I've completely ruined that second name. Even though there is a good selection of sci-fi terrain crates for Dead Zone, can we expect any new box sets a la Terrain Sprues, Terrain Crate 3 to, to, to oh wait, I've got to reread this. Terrain Crate 3 to Terrain and Beyond. Well, I think Ronnie already mentioned uh, Fetish for Terrain, so <laughs> read into that what you will with regards to um, with regards to that, but we do have 
um, a sci-fi crate, much like the, the GM starter crate for the fantasy line. We've got a sci-fi crate coming out pretty soon, but just it's one of the things we're just waiting for at the moment. But that is uh, along the same lines as in it'll be terrain, it'll be some uh, monsters and baddies and some good guys in there as well. Um, and everything to, to get your, your sci-fi RPG game going uh, because we've seen such a good response to the sci-fi version we thought we'd we'd give that one a go and see um and see how we get on with it so from that point of view yes uh, and that'll be a range of existing bits and bobs plus we're also working on um terrain crate as a whole around what we do with it uh, and that includes the the sci-fi lines as well as the the fancy stuff uh, whether we rejig some of the uh, some of the boxes maybe reintroduce some of the red brick uh, which is always popular but not easy to get hold of um so yeah there's an awful lot going on with Terrain Crate, and we just need some boats to arrive. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. Uh, Pat, we have, we have a question. I, how much are you missing Adepticon right now? Obviously, I, I talked to you on the podcast about Adepticon, so I think you're, I think you're the thought on the mind. Uh, actually, you know, we're missing it quite a bit, actually, because there's a uh, one of the time a year where we actually get to see a certain amount of people, you know, certain people uh, uh, just the one time a year. So it's uh, it's uh, definitely a miss. Uh, I'm not missing all the work, but uh, I'm, missing, I'm missing the hanging out. The gaming and the drinks. Uh, I mean, I, I wish I was there. Let's have a look. Uh, Rob. If I didn't mute my microphone, are Captain Cards going to be made available again for Dreadball? So, uh, yeah, Captain Cards. So that was something that was introduced in Dreadball Second Edition, and it's the idea that your captain has access to basically different abilities that they can level up. I guess, kind of. Um, so they've been un unavailable for a while. We're actually looking at what we kind of do with the captain's cards. Whether we do like a season pack, uh, and that all the captains have access to those. Um, so in the sh in the long term, we're looking at what we do with uh, the captain cards. In the short terms, yeah, I think we'll we'll look at ordering some more and, and getting them back in stock as well. And Martin, you touched on sci-fi and fantasy. Uh, although you did you did say about the red brick. Uh, any more terrain pieces for the Walking Dead specifically? Uh, your yeah, well the um, the terrain crate two stuff. One of the retail launches of that is all around uh, the Walking Dead. So yes. Definitely. Fantastic. Um, let's have a look. Nick M. Williams, of course, uh, <laughs> asking about uh, bulk buy options for scarecrows. I guess that could extend to um, to the butchers as well. Uh, do we have a plan for that, um, Matt or Ronnie? Matt. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so when, when he says bulk buy, do you mean I mean the, you can already buy? individually i think rob on the website well i think i think nick is referring specifically to uh a ridiculous order he placed on the website <laughs> which was a hundred was it 120 scarecrows so I, and I, I did actually reply to this on facebook and said we don't want to repeat of anyone having to play against an army similar to nick's yes yeah, so we're so, going to make double the yeah so, more than 40 we're going to add a, a, a a Nick Williams surcharge on. Yeah, I think that was a that was a personal request from Steve Hildrew, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, and, and, and I think he's only doing it to show off that he's glued that many um, scarecrows together. So it's silly club self-aggrandizement <laughs> by that most modest of Yorkshiremen. <laughs> I thought he was from Lancashire. Uh, yeah, no, he is actually. Sorry, I stand corrected. You're absolutely right. How can I make a mistake? He's a he's a second class Yank Lancashireman. Uh, Matt, are the Affindians coming as an army? I'm sure that even though Paul Jarvis is good at making friends, he'd like to have some company that's a little more lively. What, Jarvis isn't Affidian? I don't believe Rob. I think when you wrote him, he just, he's just obsessed with them. He's, yeah, he's a, a kind of, he, he was a wizard that kind of became obsessed and got turned to the, well, he's not the, necessarily the dark side, but yeah, he was... Uh, he found an old book, became slightly obsessed with it, and then started to dress like what he thought was an Ophidian would dress like as well. Um, but uh, yeah, he's good at making friends. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave you to answer the, the trickier question about Ophidian armies. Uh, so I know, I know what the Ophidian army should look like. 
um, and I've got uh, some ideas for draft ideas for for lists and models and things like that. But at the minute, that's that's as that's as far as they are. So yes, there are there are tentative plans, um, and I know a rough timeline for when that will happen. But uh, it's it's not in the uh, certainly not in the short term. Every time it's asked, it gets pushed back. <laughs> yeah, reset the clock. <laughs> Now it's twenty twenty five. Yeah. Uh, Pascal Ruiz, are you planning to do a point adjustment and or profile adjustment? Some units have the same profile and have a different cost, or have the same profile but extra special rule worth the same. Uh, it has been thought that cheap cost units will lower the US to compensate zombie scarecrows. I guess that sort of comes into like Clash of King, and, and you sort of touched on that and um sort of you have I haven't really had the chance to look at how units have played out even though they are similar yeah i mean it's part it's it's it partly comes into uh, things like clash of kings where we where we balance stuff but that has to be based on uh, you know a good number of results from from events and um, and feedback but but sometimes you know you can't directly compare things from two armies and just say, oh, well, they've got the same profile, therefore they must cost the same, because you've got to take into effect, into account all the other things that the army has and can do and the synergies within the army. And something might might have us um, be more or less efficient in one army than another. So it, it's, it's dangerous to directly compare things like that. Okay. Uh, Ronnie, uh, is there a plan for a more child-friendly dungeon saga? <laughs> Um, bizarrely, yeah, it's something we've been working on the background, actually. Just, just waiting to see that there's a, a demand out there for it. But um, and the, 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 the titles are going to be Dungeon Saga Origins option. And it's, um, it's, a way, it's a great way of just, you know, slightly simplifying the whole experience instead of, you know, very intricate dungeon tiles, as you know, at the moment, which we use because it creates really defensive points. So in a player versus player scenario, um, you know, the undead has to outnumber the heroes in order to, to slow them down and, and win. Um, so in, um, we, we, we kind of make it more simple for straightforward gaming experience, easier to set up, easier to play. And um, we're quite excited about that. And we've got really quite a bit of interest in something we were talking about prior to uh, these dark days. So yeah, watch this space. Could be really good fun, really great. Um, you know, dipping your toe into those slightly more advanced board games than traditional board games. You know, introduction to miniature board games, uh, introduction to Dungeon Crawl. So something we've got high hopes for and uh, we're quite excited about. Okay, and the second part of that, which I'll direct towards Rob. Uh, for League of Infamy, will there be further expansions not seen on the Kickstarter when it hits retail? So obviously in the Kickstarter, we had the Siren's Wrath, which was a Trident Realm one, and then we had the No Half Measures, um, amusingly titled there, the Halfling one. Um, so at the minute, they're the only definite ones, but we did have, we, we kind of knocked around some different ideas when we were planning League of Infamy. Something to do with the Salamanders might be quite cool. Um, but uh, yeah, at the minute, we just got those two, but kind of stay tuned. And if obviously League of Infamy is kind of the, uh, the pledge manager is on at the minute. So if you want to get a late pledge, head over to GameFound. Nice plug there. Um, but um, yeah, if it, if it does well once on retail, then we can see what we do and uh, possibly look down the line and release some extra ones as well. Cool. Uh, Nathan asking, I'll, I'll send this towards you, Matt. Are there any plans for Sylvian kin models, uh, Bosgrave, Wiltfarver, etc.? Um, again, it's a bit like the Ophidians. I know what they should look like. Um, so I've got, you know, so at some point I will get um, some some of those concepted. You know, I think we will try not to do things piecemeal. Um, you know, I'd probably com I'd probably combine that uh, and some of their characters with um, with something like a Vanguard release. So we'd release specifically uh, maybe Sylvan Elves as a as a Vanguard faction, and then bring some of those those um, those characters and things in at that point, and do it that way. Um, but you know, as a, as an entire army, um, not no immediate plans to do an, an entire army. So I think Van Vanguard is a, is a, is a great way for us to introduce some of those new concepts. Um, which, which you've seen with the, the stuff we've brought out so far, like the like with the Riverguard Dambuster and things like that, which then made their way back into King, Kings of War. Um, 
I'll throw this one out into the the open, whoever takes it. Uh, what's the release schedule for subsequent Hellboy waves? Say that again, Matt. What is the release schedule for subsequent Hellboy waves? So okay. you've got Hellboy in Mexico. Yeah, so at the moment, the, I mean, the next wave that's coming is going to be late April. There's going to be the... Um, there's the busts, which you said they've been doing the Kickstarter. We had a bit of fun with those. Uh, lovely painted minis, big, nice racing pieces. We've also got... Is it a BPRD, Rob? BPRD case files. Yeah, that's right. So the BPRD is kind of like the Hellboy greatest hits where you can kind of make your own... I was going to say mixtape. I guess the hit kids won't know what I mean. A, a playlist of uh, all the, of all the kind of greatest enemies and bosses that he's fought, and you can kind of mix them all over and mix them all up and create your own missions. So uh, people have been uh, having loads of fun with those uh, kind of on board game geek and things, and some of the people who've already got it. So yeah, that's next. Mexico, the corner. So it's already out. Is that out? Got to show what I know. So, um, Hellboy Mexico is out, is it? We should be out. No, am I getting confused? No, uh, and then we've also got later in the year, we'll have another show exclusive. Well, I think I have alluded to this before, but I think it's uh, a little hairy pig man. <laughs> it's coming out. People seem to love picking up. Uh, they've all got game playing pieces, so they'll be happening. Um, some of you may have had a little dabble with a card game as well that we've been working on, which is definitely not a drinking game, definitely not a drinking game, but it is a push your luck. These are some dice and some cards, very, very good fun. We had it at Gen Con last year. Uh, I've been taking you around um, some of the events. We played a big game at Masters last week. Um, I think I had a game with down at CanCon as well. Um, or maybe it was still stuck in well, Berman's drawer at that point. But anyway, it's been touring the world. Some of you have a chance to play it. It's been at some of the open days. It's a great little game. So that may Thank well you. be coming direct out. We'll have some fun with that. And we've done most of the journey from the main graphic novels, but we've not quite finished it. So who knows? Maybe what's that final book called, Rob? I always forget the name. Storm and the Fury. The Storm and the Fury. Who knows? I mean, it's only had the appetite to do a big, huge travel, eh? Watch this space. Uh, See, I was at a Denticon and I drank a few beers and revealed more then, but there we are. <laughs> and if you need any more of the information, uh, the previous Hellboy podcast with Rob uh, has a bunch of the details, just in case we did miss anything. Yeah, um, go, go check that out again. Uh, Adam, we're speaking to you from the future. Can we see the new Macedon and Strider? Of course you can. Go watch the Dead Zone <laughs> uh, preview. Um, Rob, uh, send this towards you. Will there be a new Containment Protocols book for Dead Zone this summer? Maybe a Nexus size style? Uh, no, so th there won't be a, a, a Containment Protocols. So Escalation pretty much did everything we could kind of possibly want to do with Dead Zone in terms of getting the rules a uh, bit sorted out. All the factions are now wonderfully balanced thanks to the Dead Zone uh, RC, uh, apart from well, apart from murder birds, which need to be ner nerfer birds. Um, but um, yeah, it's kind of all that you've, you've got the new big kind of scenarios and then you've got the balanced scenarios as well, all the abilities, all the items. So yeah, Escalation is really kind of a, a great update. So I think there won't be a containment protocols and kind of a Ronnie alluded to this earlier on about kind of making the game slightly bigger, uh, which is something we've, if you've seen Dead Zone Excel at the open day, you'll know we've kind of looked at that. So um, I guess watch this space for that, on that. But yeah, Nexus Sci actually is, is currently free from the website as well. So if you want some solo play uh, against a load of uh, plague zombies, then uh, you can go and download that for free and, and get playing. See a few little extra plague zombies. Um... Ricky asking, what faction is next for Vanguard? Please say Orcs, please say Orcs, please say Orcs. Um, I guess Matt? Uh, well, as, as uh, people have seen the uh, online with the, the pictures of the Ogres coming out, Ogres is the next um, next release uh, for Vanguard. So they'll get, a, they'll get new cards, uh, updated rules. Um, obviously now Vanguard's been out but what they were always going to be one of the trickiest ones because they're obviously mostly large models 
and large models are typically the exception in most other uh, most other war bands. So we've done a, a whole bunch of work with the the Vanguard RC and, and the Playtest group, uh, knocking them into shape. Uh, so they'll they'll be next alongside some uh, a couple of Kings of War releases, which will be some conversion bits onto the plastics, both for siege uh, breakers and uh, some alternative parts for warriors. Um, to uh, mix up those, so some new heads, arms, shields, that sort of thing. Great, and much like the Dead Zone preview, there's a Vanguard one on Sunday, um, and, uh, and and so you can check out. It should be all the all the previews for the for the fun stuff there. Um, let me bring up back up the questions. My wife has no interest in games, but is a massive Fallout fan. Oh, referring to the the videos that. Of course, Ronnie has been featured in uh, this week, which have been absolutely hilarious to edit. And, da, 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 da. and you've turned me down considerably, I like to say. I've got a record of saying they are far funny when I finish them. Uh, uh, far, you, far, you're confusing I've been, offensive I've been, with funny. I've been gagged. It's like working in China. I said, <laughs> I can't work under these conditions. I, I just, demand my freedom of speech. I just wanted a job after Probably they were released. Probably kept me out of the course as well, so that's good. <laughs> cut, cut, cut him out of this as well now, Matt. Yeah. <laughs> uh, Patrick Askin uh, for The Walking Dead. Uh, I'll send this towards you, Roddy. Uh, will there be any new terrain kits like the farm, prison, etc. for the new Hilltop releases? Hilltop Manor, perhaps? Is there a plan to still make the missing model on his knees for our eeny, meeny, miny, mo display base? And I'll tell you what, go that one. I can ask you the rest of the question. It's a big one. Okay, I mean, at the moment, the MDF, we haven't. We've just, we've just got these resins out, and then we were going to do them with the plastic terrain crate minis, um, which is going to be more generic, post-apocalyptic, modern-day set of plastics. And then we were going to think about what's next. Obviously, I think we've, we've revealed that the Express are totally in sculpting and looking rather amazing. So they're coming later on in the year alongside a huge big omnibus book which is going to both get all of the keywords and all of the rules and all the FAQ and errata all put into one place. So if you want to start playing, you just need that book. That's for All Out War. And then it'll have add-ons and expansions and new scenarios for both Call to Arms and some new fantasy scenarios, probably set in the prison for the uh, Henry's Negan game. So you can take your Walking Dead minis from the football wave one and two and miles behind us and um, add them to the um, add them to the tiles from his Negan and we're gonna, we've got a few other scenarios you see the set pieces from there so a lot of good stuff coming for there uh, and then I think we will get a terrain and yes stuff has been very very popular I mean one of the things we're walking down is we've just seen some amazing gaming tables amazing paint jobs um, people have really been able to it's quite relatively small you know 20 by 20 or 20 by 40 you can you can get a lot of really you can spend a lot of time to make the quality fantastic with the terrain so we've been we've been conscious that uh, people have really gone to town on that and we want to kind of keep encouraging that so next wave of terrain was the stuff from the tc uh, release and then yes probably almost certainly some more mds stuff later on and the second part to that, uh, any plans to make a more robust campaign system that includes creating and maintaining a settlement, for example? Uh, this can include board game elements or solo play. Yeah, both very good ideas. Um, if we have room in the omnibus, we'll put it in there. Probably more realistic. We put it, you know, we may well get to a kind of Clash of Kings type of scenario with the book, one a year and they probably end up in next year's book alongside, you know, we've still only probably about a hundred and something. In the so there's still plenty of stories to go out. So we, we, we'll keep developing the all-out war narrative. Um, so I think the stuff to the gunnels, I think, in page count terms, and in terms of what we can get written and done in time. But I really like the idea of maintaining a settlement and a big campaign system. It'd be great fun. And I think now we've got, you know, quite a lot of the minis out, it'd be absolutely appropriate. Um, so, yeah, keep watching the space with very good suggestions. I like this. Ronnie, have you got your phone oh, attached to a bit head. of string and swinging it around your head? <laughs> huh? Have you got a, your phone attached to a bit of string and you're swinging it around your head? Does it sound that bad? I'm, I'm pacing, you see, I'm pacing. I've never sat down for the first half an hour and now... How fast are you pacing? <laughs> <laughs> 
Night of Wind. Uh, Erasmus, this... I've sat down now, you've shamed me. Uh, Erasmus, this is a two for, uh, but I'll, I'll start off with just the statement. Firstly, thank you for being a company that uh, actually cares about the game your customers play and let us have our hobby our way. Uh, personally, I will say you're very welcome. It's yeah. all me. Um, but uh, thank you very much. And secondly, an actual question, which I thought was an interesting one. Uh, this, will, this will probably uh, whoever jumps in. Uh, in which order are I prioritizing the three things? Making new things, so new minis, uh, filling out the incomplete model ranges, and improving the old models? Matt? I guess Matt. Um, I guess filling in the... Filling in the model ranges is, is probably on a par with new stuff, I would guess. You know, so w whenever I put a, a release schedule together, I look at um, what what new things we can introduce, what uh, what I think would be good in terms of our IP and where we want to take a particular army. Um, but I also I'm always mindful of filling in in gaps, going going back to uh, um, existing stuff. At the minute, I guess, in terms of going back to old, older models, um, I think, you know, Vanguard has given us, again, the opportunity to do that from a, on, the, on the fantasy side for, for Kings of War. So, you know, we've, as you can see recently, we went back and looked at the aesthetic for uh, things like the Abyssal um, Dwarfs. So we've gone back and, you know, that gave us the advantage to do a plastic kit, which I don't think anyone's really done before for, for Naughty Dwarfs. Um, and that gave us a, a, um, a great opportunity to just just to update them from um, and, and take them away from the, uh, the the hybrids that they were before, based on the old uh, the, the kind of the good dwarf kits. Um, and and Vanguard's given us that opportunity elsewhere as well. So you know when we like when we did the forces of nature, we looked at the druid, which um, we looked at and said actually we we think that was actually probably quite a a weak model in the line, um, and we redid it, but we went back to the original concept art uh, and re-sculpted it again. Um, and I think that's a much more improved model. So, so we do do it, but uh, my, uh, but uh, of, of the three things, that's probably less of my focus. And it's uh, but new stuff um, and filling in gaps are probably on a par with each other. Okay, uh, Rob. Even if you don't know the answer to this question, it just feels right to uh, to head this one your way. For Dead Zone, it would be great to field an all goblin force, but we need some goblin troop choices for that. Anything that can be done? I totally yeah. agree. I think no. every single game. No. Boo, boo. Boo. No, Please boo. Mute, mute everyone else on this. <laughs> I think, uh, yeah, every, on it. every single game needs more goblins. I think we should 100% do hard plastic Dead Zone goblins, and everyone agrees. He even <laughs> summoned goblins in the background. <laughs> <laughs> totally. Uh, and it was called, uh, right. Sorry, that's my kids have invaded on me. Call now. Well, we do. I mean, if, if they know anything about Dead Zone, I'm happy to have them on the show. Uh, and that was followed up with hashtag Dead Zone is life, of course, because why wouldn't it not be? And last but not least, uh, for The Walking Dead, is there any thoughts on producing a fully co op mode for that? Uh, Ronnie or Matt? Co op, so this would be where you. You you all play together against the zombies. Mm. I mean, I love the early scenarios. There is no PvP angle. It is it is players versus zombies. It's quite a lot of um, quite a lot of those scenarios, isn't there? Nah, Probably like his so. Negan anyway. Well, there's, there's all, of course all of those. His Negan is mm. nearly co op. Um, I think the scenarios in the omnibus are, are there is no. Here's an eager angle to it. There's no angle. You are all playing together against killing the zombies in those ones. I'll check with Klaus Stone, but if you remember the series in the sitting when they were taking over the prison, there's a bit of PvP action against the prisoners, but that was mostly covered in the um, safety behind bars expansion. This bit is actually set, it's using the tiles. It's far more board game, far more, you know, can't you, can't you keep Dungeon Crawl esque. But it's, you know, we've got one of the scenarios, which is which the famous scene where Tyrese goes into the gymnasium and they all leave him. <laughs> and um, I think they've written that one where you've got to see how long you can survive and see if you can kill them all, Tyrese style. 
So, uh, and there's a few more areas of kind of co-op dungeon clearing adventures. So, I think, yeah, there's some of that stuff. Um, there should be plenty, but it's uh, something I'll dig into. If we've not covered something, then feel, again, feel free to PM me and um, explain what you're thinking about. Thank you. Uh, and on that one, uh, has anyone got anything, any more news coming out? Uh, Carl, you're well, on, I think. Can I, can I just say, like, over this weekend, of the uh, when is this coming out, Matthew? When, when will this be out? When will people be listening to it? Uh, so this will be out on Friday uh, right. at, at the same podcast time, so 12 o'clock GMT. Okay. GMT, lovely. Yes, well, I'm yes, please, but no one should. Um, <laughs> so, yeah, so Friday, yesterday we had something featured at a Depticon. Do you remember what it was? Um, what was the Thursday slot, Rob? Thursday was it would have been dead zone. So we uh, it was dead zone. Dead zone yesterday. Go yeah, jump and have a look around. There's videos. There's wonderful intros by a very sensible English chap uh, to helping you get through the the apocalypse. The zombie apocalypse. No zombies. Friday is Vanguard. I want to say no. Friday. Uh, <laughs> so Saturday's kings. Saturday's kings of war. Sunday is Vanguard. Uh, Monday Friday's is war. Walking Dead. Well, uh, it was it was. Possibly uh, a certain Mr. Crazy Bobby was meant to be appearing on Friday, so we'll have to uh, see about that. Well, yeah. I'm sorry about Crazy Bobby. Yeah. Not quite as good as the I don't think. So every day this week, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, we've got tons and tons of great content. Uh, earlier in the week, we told you how to multi-base. So if you get into Kings of War and you're thinking about it with third edition, go watch that. It's great fun. You might have old armies from crappy and lesser known manufacturers that you want to turn into a fantastic game. Alternatively, you might have bought that to, come to, to, to multi-base it, which is just a joy. Um, again, a wonderful Englishman. Is how to paint. Lots of free rules up on the website at the moment, uh, particularly solo ones, getting started ones. So do dive into the web, do dive into our Facebook pages. There is tons of things to keep you and your family, your uh, housemates and house guests Amused during these times, both if you're by yourself or in, in a household. Great. I think that's that's all we have time for. We're going to let you all get back to fighting over toilet paper, uh, <laughs> defending your, your house from invaders, uh, and going on your, if you're in the UK, one allotted piece of exercise. Not two, <laughs> just the one. <laughs> Uh, thank you, obviously, to everyone that's been involved. Um, as Ronnie said, there is more content coming out. Um, the uh, the the fun videos have been they're originally on the blog, but now they're they're getting trickled out to you as well. So uh, keep an eye on those and uh, and on the YouTube channel and the Facebook uh, for all the future uploads and news uh, regarding Mantic. And thank you, everyone.